the time distance of the different of the different plagues. You know, what was the time period when Moses first went to Pharaoh? Pharaoh refused in the back and forth. Was it a period of days? Was it a period of weeks? Was it a period of months? We know that Moses was in the in the wilderness for for 40 to 60 years. Some say actually was more 60 years. That means that Moses was roughly about 20 years old when he fled into the wilderness. And if if we take that that dating as being true, that he was roughly about 20 years when after he killed the unnamed Egyptian and he fled into the wilderness into Median and then married um 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 uh, Horeb, Raguel, Ruel. He has a couple of Jethro, he has a couple of different names in the scriptures, but his Ethiopian um father in law, he tended the sheep, he married the Ethiopian woman. Also she's called Median Knight, even that whole is she an Ethiopian or Median? What's the relationship of Median to Ethiopian? Was it like we say today, one was African or European or Asian? To say one was Ethiopian, but their particular nationality or nation or where they dwelt? You know, like some of us dwell in, in New York. Others may be in Atlanta. Some may be in California or Texas or Canada or the Caribbean or Europe or Africa or Asia, you know what I mean? So was it saying the particular locality? But when I look at the time frame of the Exodus, and, and I think the Exodus is very important for us. It's probably one of the most important areas in this present time, especially 2012, the Exodus. Because from what perspective are we viewing the exodus and the elements and how well are we versed on the first of all the proper hermeneutic the proper interpretation of the bible this means we have to look at the linguistic factors you know we have to look at the cultural factors because many things in the scriptures have been misunderstood for hundreds of years by mostly majority European um, scholar scholarship and 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 the white wash Christians and Jews, because they have been trying to reinterpret the elements of the Exodus, putting themselves or their kind of people, European people, as the main actors or characters. Hence, we get Charleston Heston's version or perversion of of Exodus and the Moses story and Yul Brenner, you know, from the King and I, another thing, the same guy that was in Westworld, the crazy android cowboy, he becomes the pharaoh in the Exodus movie with Charles Heston, Charleston Heston. So when most people think of Exodus, we are now bombarded by these, these false um, spiritual Egypt types. And this is where I find the, the, the rubber proverbially speaking, meets the road. It's, it's the context of the Exodus. Now, for us who are looking at the Exodus from an Ethiopic perspective, you understand, from a black Hebrew, Israelite perspective, we have to both now look at past, we have to look at the present reality, and we have to look at the future. Or we're looking at it through God's spectacle, or Yah's way. He who is, he who was, is, and will be. So we have to look, we have to understand the context of the past. This is why we've presented some of the books that we presented in the last portion of this particular video, dealing with uh, Israel's debt to Egypt, um, the Hebrew, Hebrew characters derived from the hieroglyphics, and Amorinya. Um, and Tigrinya Al Hieroglyphics for Beginners by Legacy Ayala. So we pointed out that as just some reference material resources that will help clarify some of the points. For example, in the Exodus Decoded, um, James Cameron, producer, director, and the filmmaker um, Simcha uh, Jacobovitsky, 
um, they did a pretty a pretty interesting and in many ways it presented certain elements and I thought to speak a little bit more on these elements how they also connect with where we're at in our present studies and 20 and 2012 now when I mentioned and I said that how long was the exodus you know what what was the time span of the exodus not not when did it occur we already touched briefly on on that and we agree with the the dating from the rough dating from um exodus decoded because an exodus decoded now remember vision this 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 hopefully you've taken this as a note you've taken this down vision because this is the portion this is the name of this particular Torah portion. So we're going to clear all of this because we want to touch on the seven plagues. The seven, the seven plagues which are in this portion. And then we have the three plagues that are coming up in the next, in the next sabbatical um, reading and feeding. But we're going to keep um, Waira or Vaira there which basically would be understood as and I appeared appeared Bamarinya Tegaletahu Tegaletahu and I appeared. Right? And we touched on the name and El Shaddai briefly as well. But here we want to touch on the plagues. But we want to look at 2012. You remember the menorah in a previous video? We touched on um, a menorah, and it pointed out the, the, the tribulation time period. Now, between the Ethiopic and the Western, or the Romantic, we're living in the Gentile times now. So that's the Romantic time. So we call it 2012. Ethiopically, Let's look at the time. So we want to look at chronology for a moment. Let's put this chronology. The chronology of the Exodus. The the best and the most accurate time period that we find is roughly 1500, but we want to stick with 1440, which would be in the 15th. Um, you can call it what the 15th century, or some might, since it's reversed, it's BC, we may call it the 13th century. I'm not too really sure, but the rough time period of it, 1440, say 1500s, 1440. Now, how long was this back and forth contest between Moshe, Musa, and Pharaoh? How long was it? Was it a, a day? Obviously not. Was it a week? Seemingly probably a little bit longer than that. Was it uh, a, a year? Now, it was any period of time between uh, several months, more likely a year, but actually, more conservative speaking, a couple of years. And, and, and now, the Bible doesn't directly say, well, Moses went down to Egypt to speak to Pharaoh on this day, and then he got the release for the Israelites on that day. It, it, it's not that it's not that so-called smooth. We're talking real world now, not just theoretics, but real world, because this has a resonance on us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. Now we recognize at the start we need the vision. This is why Yahweh appeared. You understand? We need the vision, the the the, the, the revelation. This is why the book of Revelation is important as well. Now, in Exodus Decoded, the documentary, Exodus Decoded, they basically say 1500. They, they are stuck on Ahmose as being the pharaoh of the Exodus, while traditional European scholarship says that it was Ramses. And, and most will read, Revelate, I mean, read Exodus and they'll find that the Israelites built these treasure cities, um, Python and, and Ramesses, and they'll say, see, that's the Pharaoh. They were building it for the Pharaoh Ramesses. And most who interpret or misinterpret the scripture in that way is because of these movies and because of um, uh, the European 
the Anglo-American white, the wasp version, perversion of it, the whitewash perversion of it. This is why there's a lot of other perspectives being presented now, even by many of them. Many of them are now looking at the evidence, you understand? Not dismissing the Bible's testimony. That's the first aspect. The Bible's testimony is true. But it's how true is your understanding and comprehension of this Bible based on proper hermeneutics, a proper interpretation, when to interpret some things literally, when to interpret it symbolically, or when it's also both a literal aspect and a symbolic aspect. Now, let's go to Jeremiah for a moment so we can get into this particular point. So Exodus Decoded, it's a video. We've mentioned this before, and we hope to actually get into a more um, critical or a more critique, to, to critique it a little bit better, perhaps even do some DVDs and documentaries or portions where we can go into some point-by-point -point, um, matter. But since we're still in this 14th Torah portion, reading and feeding, we want to continue in this spirit. Um, and it says right here in Jeremiah chapter 23. So let's put Jeremiah chapter 23. There's another document, so you might find this on the Internet. I wanted to mention this with the other document, but it's um, chapter 15. And you can find that the Revelation 2, the number 2, 7 dot O-R-G. Revelation, the number 2, 7 dot O-R-G. And it's called, um, Are Ye Not As the Children of the Ethiopians to Me? And, and most of us know this from Amos 9 and 7. But this particular document, you can find this. Um, the page should still be up on the internet. If it's not, we'll try to post this to our um, study materials. This is called "Are You Not As Are You Not All As the Children of the Ethiopians to Me?" Let's put the site right here and uh, Revelation, Revelation two like that seven dot o r g. Let me just check it again. Yeah, 2 7. And it's chapter 15. Chapter 15. Um, get that, get this document if you can. Um, are ye not all as the children of Ethiopians? And I would highly suggest ones take the, either print it out. Here we have a printout here. It's about 47 pages. But it, it's probably well worth to get a hard, to have a hard copy of it as well, but at least get a read of this document. Are ye not all as the children of the Ethiopians to me? And um, the brother who compiled this and wrote this, he has passed on to the spirit world. Um, a, a European Jewish brother actually that wrote this, and it's it's a very it's a very, very interesting um, documentary. Uh, Michael, his name was Michael, I forget his last name right now, but still Michael is a good name. And we pray that, that Jah has mercy on, on his soul. He's done some justice in this research compilation and writing, and there's a lot of other information at the revelation27.org. This is for the brothers and sisters who are serious and doing due diligence and really are trying to bring it together, um, at least to understand it, to know the truth, know the half of the story that hasn't been told till now. So Revelation 27.org. Um, and we're going to touch on some of the information here as well. But we think that this goes well with understanding this Exodus theme from a black perspective or the black Israel. We as the once lost but now found Beta Israel or Ethiopian Hebrews and elect Rastafari. This is a very, very important document that gives a historical, um, cultural context to what we're about to read here in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. Now, in Jeremiah, let's put this right here Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23. The whole chapter is, is well worth, this is another important 
chapter in the scripture that we think um, connects with this present period that we are in. Um, verse uh, 7, it says, um, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, or Yahweh, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, or, or the Lord liveth, um, Jah live, Yahai, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, we know that this is said, this is, um, we're beginning from verse 7, though we will suggest to read the whole thing. This chapter dispels the, the spiritual Egyptian dream, this dream a lie. The whole MLK dream a lie, um, white girls dream going down into Egypt, so forth and so on, the Washington March. This one chapter here puts nearly 40 years of our past and present history in, a, in its spiritual context. So when we're talking about 2012, we're not just talking about 2012, this is 2012 right here. But we should be looking beyond just 2012. 2012 is the opening of a prophetic time and space. But if we are not prepared to be proactive in it, it can be the most um, devastating and destructive time in human history. It, it all depends on how are you prepared or will you be prepared or will you be unprepared? Will you be prepared in, 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 in heart, in, in mind, in body? If you're prepared in, in heart and mind and the spirit and the soul, then it's very easy to deal with the physical world or the material world situation. But unfortunately, people have their priorities. Part of this, this Babylon, this confusion, we have our priorities actually backwards. We have our priorities wrong. And this is one of the reasons why, in spite of all the learning that many of us can come to, as Scripture says, uh, forever learning but not able to come to the acknowledgement. When are we going to come to the point of acting on the knowledge or acting on what we know or what we believe or what we admit, what we are main as the truth? That's the question each of us must ask. But here, verse 7, it says that no longer shall this be said, that Jah liveth, the Lord liveth, Yahai, Yahweh Chai. He is the living one which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Verse 8, it says, but the Lord liveth, Jah liveth, Jah liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. And from all countries, whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So let's focus on these two verses right here. So this is the Jeremiah Exodus. This is now the Jeremiah connection with Exodus. Now, if you look at this chapter, chapter 23, chapter 23 speaks to the future restoration. The Bible also talks about there'll be a particular age, an age, a, a new age, in which this will be the age of the restoration, a time of restoration, a time of refreshing, a time of renewal. And we've touched on this in another video as well, but we're linking that, which is prophetic, you understand, speaking of a new dispensation, the Adis Zemin. And here in the prophet Jeremiah, Remus, it says the future restoration and conversion of Israel. So there'll be a future restoration and there'll be a future conversion of Israel. This, and then there's a message in this chapter 23 of Jeremiah to the faithless shepherds, the faithless shepherds. Now, we've connected the link with the faithless shepherds, since the shepherds are those spirits like the pastors and the preachers. We know that the Negro 
or the so-called black pastors and preachers, and this also includes King, have not been faithful shepherds according to this word, the B-I-B-L-E. And the B-I-B-L-E is where they derive, you understand, as far as document their authority and their ministry. Speaking to the black and Negro pastors and preachers, they have not done due diligence to prepare God's people, to prepare this lost sheep. So there is a message against the faithless shepherds, and the main theme of that message that we find in Jeremiah chapter 23, it concerns pastors that are preaching their dream instead of God's word, instead of God's vision. So what we see in this time, we see the vision, right? We see the vision, right, versus the dream. Now, we know that the vision is Yah's vision or Jah's vision, and we know that the dream is the lie, this, this dream. Now, it's very interesting because we can see this unfolding, actually, this portion of Scripture unfolding even in our present reality. Even when, when it says here that no longer will they say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, we who are Hebrews, Ethiopian Hebrews, we know that this is said, this is part of the Haggadah, or this is a part of the Passover, the Fasika, the Pesach, the Passover Seder. This is said every Passover by Hebrews, black Hebrews, by Jews, all over who who um, celebrate Passover, this is part of the Passover Seder. This is a part of the Passover ritual. Where, where, when we say, Yah or Adonai liveth, or Jehovah Jah live, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's what Passover um, commemorates. Passover commemorates the deliverance of the children of Israel from, some say slavery, Bible says bondage, bondage in Egypt. Now, if that is true, that is the past. That's what already happened before. Now, the prophecy and the prophets are prophesizing things which are to come in their time. Now, we see in our present time, we are no longer in the physical land of Egypt, that's over there in the east, but we are in a spiritual Egypt presently. So we're in a spiritual Egypt. Now, the next verse, verse 8 says, but instead of saying that, that means that the Passover Seder must change. There must be an upgrading, prophetically speaking, and in the revelation of Rastafari, of this particular Passover or Fasica Seder. How do we know this? Because the word says so. It says, but the Lord liveth, Jah live, Yahai, which brought up and which led the seed. Pay careful attention to the words here. The seed or the race. In other words, this, there's a particular ethnic or racial group that the Almighty has in mind. Not because they are the best of all people, but because he chose them and because he has made a covenant with their or our ancestors. So when we say that we are Israelites and we even as black Israelites, this doesn't mean that we are the best of all people. And clearly our own history will basically demonstrate and show that or even spiritually and, and scripturally we can see we have not been the best of all people or the best worshipers of our own God and King of Kings. We have not. However, the word is still the word, and it says that which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of, now get this, the north country, the north country. So now we have a, a whole new location. It's not from Egypt but it's from a north country, 
Now, which north country could this be? But it doesn't stop there, comma. And all countries with the eye had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Now, one's need to understand, and hopefully most of you brothers and sisters as disciples, you already understand how we were driven, you understand, from our own land because of the curses that we brought on ourselves for disobedience. We as a people turned away from the true and living God and started worshiping false gods and other gods and other people's religion and other people's. It's like when we read this Bible and we interpret this rightly from a black Hebrew perspective, some slander us and think that we're wrong at it, but we present all the evidence and they can't present any evidence to prove that Jesus was white or that Moses was white or that any of that took place in Europe because it didn't. You see, so we are dealing with truth. So do the math and check out the facts and then decide who you will serve and which way will you walk. Will you walk your own way or will you walk Yah's way? Will you walk Jah's way? Because Jah's way is the only way to exodus or to come out of this spiritual Egypt and this Babylon which we are presently which we are presently in. So this word here is both prophetic, right? It's both prophetic, and then it connects old Egypt, this north country or North America, where the majority and the bulk of the so-called black slaves, the Ethiopian Hebrew slaves, and the other countries, the Caribbean, South Central America as well, where the lost sheep of the Beta Israel were scattered. So, Two things, our Passover Seder, and then this is coming up, I think, April, roughly around the time of April. You can check uh, our Hebrew Judaic calendar for the exact precise dates of it. But within the, 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 the Seder, in other words, the Seder is like, is like the meal. There's a Seder meal where the family, the Hebrew family, come and have a meal together and recall what occurred from ancient times. But here Yahweh says that no longer will they say this because it will not just be a memorial, but there's an actual reality of a new exodus. So when we talk about exodus, historically speaking, scripturally speaking, it's important for us to get a groundation so that we can see the correspondence and the, re and the resonance of where we're at presently and what the Almighty is showing us in vision for the future. You see, so when we say the God, the, 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 the God who is the God of Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov, or, or the first power of the Trinity, the triune God, the, the Jewish Trinity, he who was, he who is, and he who will be. So when we recognize what has already happened, when we recognize the true correspondence of what is happening, this now clearly demonstrates that the vision of what is to come is true and gives us the, the, not just the opportunity, but the responsibility to be prepared. Be prepared in, in mind, be prepared in heart, and be prepared physically in that order. Now, the reason why we want to touch on this particular chapter right here, Jeremiah chapter 23, 7 to 8, is to further demonstrate that my people perish, right, because of a lack of knowledge. And a people without a vision, you understand, also perish. But they're seeing something. They are caught up in this dream. And now this dream now, really, when properly understood in spiritual Egypt, is bondage, is slavery. It's a new form of slavery. The old reggae song that says, they took the chain off our hands and our feet and they put it on our brain, or they put, it, they put these chains on our hearts and minds. But even so, we have the opportunity by making our wills obedient to good influences and to study and show ourselves approved so we would know what to do to come out of that, you understand, to come out of that. And the gateway and the doorway, we're, we're at the gateway and doorway of this time of change, of this new dispensation, 
so-called 2012. But it's not just about the day, but it's about the next seven to eight years as well. We have to really understand that everybody's hyped up about this particular day, but they're not really recognizing because of not recognizing the chronology. You see, you have to look at this chronology. You have to look at the time. You see, time is very, very important. That's why it says to um, redeem the time. You understand? To, because the days are evil. The days are extremely evil. And the spiritual warfare that many of us have been going through and still going through, it's, it's, it's a part of the walk. You understand that anyone who seeks to live godly or seek to live according to Jah's precepts will suffer you understand, persecution, you understand, we'll have adversity and we'll have to go through it. But if we learn how to suffer, we cannot suffer. And this is why the way of Christ is so exemplary for us. And it behooves I and I to learn it and to do it. So let me just connect this right here and we'll pick up on this hopefully in the next part of this um, Revelation 11 and 8, because it speaks about now there's 42-month there's, there's prophecy. Some say that 42-month prophecy is roughly, some say, three and a half years, right? 42 or so months, about three and a half years, 36, yeah, roughly three and a half, more or less, I think three and a half years, 42 months. And it says here in verse 8, it says, um, And their dead bodies of the two witnesses shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So there's a great city, and this great city has a spiritual name or is called spiritually. It's not actually named Sodom. It's not actually named Egypt. So this is where we derive the, 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 the idea of spiritual Egypt. But we're forgetting about spiritual Sodom. What about spiritual Sodom? Now, there's a connection with some of the History Channel videos and what they've been talking about, the lost world, Atlantis, as well as Egypt decoded. And we're, we're going to touch on that. It says, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, our Lord, if they're saying our Lord, Jesus Christ, was he crucified in Sodom? Mm, not, that, not that we recall. It was outside of Jerusalem, right? Then it says, and Egypt, which spiritually, so it's spiritually. So now there's this great city. There's this great city. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Now, some connect this great city, and they say, well, this city is, 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 is Babylon. This great city right here that it's mentioning is um, Babylon, but others will say it must be Jerusalem. The great city must be Jerusalem. Jerusalem. But it doesn't say exactly what this great city, but it does mention a spiritual Sodom and a spiritual Egypt, a spiritual Sodom and a spiritual Egypt. And that's what we want to touch on further as we explore the link between the so-called Atlantis, um, the Minoan civilization, Santorini, that, that volcanic explosion, which some say was a part of the natural disaster that figured in the miracles in Egypt, but also the plagues that befell upon Egypt. And then we also want to touch on which gods, which particular gods were directly mocked by Aaron and Moses, showing and demonstrating the true power of the one God. And it says right here in 12.12, we're not up to 12.12 yet, but just looking forward, the redemption that's typical by blood, it says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, 
both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. I am Jah. I am the Lord, L-O-R-D in the scripture. So we're going to touch a little bit more on that, but if you can, try to get a copy of, of this. Check out Revelation 27.org. It's, uh, are ye not as the children, are ye not all as the children of Ethiopians unto me? O children of Israel is the rest of his chapter 15. Chapter 15, very important chapter right there. Um, if you can get a, a copy, you can order one from us so you can see it on the YouTubes and it's out there on the internet. The um, uh, James Cameron Exodus Decoded. I want to touch on that. There's, a, there's another one, Lost World. Lost World, which speaks about the Santorini, the Santorini um, the volcano and the eruption. And we're going to point out the Ethiopic, you know, what is the Ethiopic connection with all of that that was, for whatever reason, left out of um, those documentaries. But we'll deal with the half of the story that hasn't been told from an Ethiopic perspective. So, um, brothers and sisters, just helping I and I get the bigger picture. Stay tuned. More to come. Yah willing. Shalom. Rastafari.